This presentation consists of a simple treatise of uh, carbohydrates. So we just look at some general features of these carbohydrates. We'll go over some nomenclature and some characteristics of these monosaccharides. And then we'll look at some reactions that occurs, not terribly deep. And then we'll probe some properties of the disaccharides, structure of the disaccharides, and explain to you exactly what uh, polysaccharides are. Carbohydrates, of course, are storehouses for chemical energy, so we can generate them by photosynthesis, or plants do, and of course, we reverse that by oxidizing them to carbon dioxide and water, and that releases the energy. So, if you look at this lot, yeah, you can see that all of these guys got plenty of OH groups, and so they're very water soluble, these monosaccharides, and these simple sugars. If you look um, at the Fischer diagram or the Fischer projection, then of course the most oxidized carbon, it's carbon one, is at the top, yeah? And at the carbon one, you can see that in the case of the aldoses, we have an aldehyde. So glucose and glyceraldehyde, these are aldoses. On the other hand, if you look at fructose, you can see that, yeah, carbon two, yeah, we have a ketone. And so fructose is a ketose. You can see here that there's a number of stereogenic centers associated with these guys. So apart from the carbon atom in this case, and this carbon six in this case, why? You have four stereogenic centers here. And so each of these guys have a R or S designation. The fact that you have four stereogenic centers mean you have two to the four possible stereoisomers, i.e. 16 possible stereoisomers. Again, the most oxidized carbon is at the top yeah and of course usually this carbon yeah is now if we look at these simple sugars again you will note that in the case of this glyceraldehyde the OH is on the right. If you look at the glucose, the penultimate carbon has an OH, right? So it's the last stereogenic center, yeah? because this one is not, but the OH is on the right. In both cases, you can see that we've given them the label D. On the other hand, the enantiomer of D-glucose is L-glucose. And as you can see, that OH on the last stereogenic center, in this case carbon-5, is on the left, and so it's given the designation L. D is on the right. In the case of this L-ribose, you can see the OH is on left. Herein, yeah, we are trying to generate a projection of this compound. And quite simply, what I want is for you to remind yourselves of Fisher projections. The vertical the vertical bonds are pointing behind the plane of the board and the horizontal bonds are pointing towards you. So if you look at this fella here, having the most oxidized carbon on the top would mean that the CHO is at the top. So immediately, this one has CHO at the bottom, so this is not a true Fischer projection of that compound. 
If you put this at the top, this at the bottom, then you will note that this will be on the left and that will be on the right. Try it. Immediately, it tells you that number two is your answer. You can see that we have some numbering schemes where if you've got three carbons in your projection, then of course you have a triose. If you've got four, then you have a tetrose. Look closely because on the penultimate carbon of erythrose, yeah, you can see that we have, of this erythrose anyway, we have the OH on the right, and so it's a D classification. Yeah. Here we have yeah, a six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, so it's a hexose. And of course, in this case, the penultimate carbon has this OH. And that OH, is, of course, is on the right. And so it's a D. So not only do we have here a aldose, but it's a hexo. So therefore, we have an aldohexose. On the other hand, if you look at the fructose, then it is ketonic. Yeah, six carbons and ketonic and so it's a ketohexose of course if you note the penultimate carbon has a OH on the right and so it's D fructose by the way most um, naturally occurring uh, monosaccharides are D so of course you're looking for an aldehyde aren't you ketonic, ketonic, yeah, ketonic, and so by process of elimination you can see that's the aldehyde species. Here, which is a ketohexose, and you can see this is aldehydic, ketonic, 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 but it's a hexose, so you need six carbons. So of course that is out because that's four carbons. That's five carbons, and so your answer there is A. Aldo pento, so you need an aldehyde and five carbons. This is a ketone. This is nonsense. That's definitely not five carbons, and so your answer there is two. There's the aldehyde group. We talked about the cyclization of these monosaccharides in the past, yeah, because you can see that we come, we have uh, oxygen from one of these carbon um, attacking uh, the aldehyde or the ketone. Now, in this case, of course, we have D glucose, which is a aldose, and the hemiacetal that forms has the tetrahedral center of that carbon being sterogenic. The carbon itself is called an anomeric carbon. In the case of a six-membered ring, yeah, when we use C5's OHs, we get a pyranose. When we do get a five-membered ring, we have what's called a furanose. Note, in the case of glucose, we have two different animals. If we have the OH off the anomeric carbon trans or on the opposite side of the CH2OH then we have a alpha sugar if we have 
the OH cis to the CH2OH, then we have a beta sugar. Look carefully. Opposite, alpha, on the same side, beta. In this case here, we have some fewer noses. The standard is for you to have the CH2OH on the pointing on the top of the ring. So therefore, if your OH is pointing to the top, then we have, yeah, is on the top of the ring, then they have a beta anima and if it's pointing below the ring we have the alpha anima The anomeric carbon remind us of the anomeric carbon is the only carbon where we have two oxygens on the same carbon. Look closely because every other carbon, yeah, has only one oxygen. You see? See? One oxygen. Right? But this anomeric carbon has two oxygens. Of course, you can see that these OH is below the ring, i.e. opposite the CH2OH, and so this is an alpha. So, of course, this is the anomeric uh, carbon, and as we stated, uh, this is opposite to this, or this is below the ring. So if we need to convert a Fisher projection into a Hayworth projection and vice versa, then we need to understand a couple of rules. Quite simply, that if we have our most oxidized carbon at carbon one, of course, yeah, we can, yeah, we should realize by now that this is the oxygen that is involved in the hemiacetal so we ignore that for the time being yeah of course the compound is on the right this this oxygen this is on the right so of course it's a d but then we focus on these central carbons two through four in this case and you should realize that all the groups on the left hand side all the groups on the left hand side including the OH, which is on three, are above the ring. So you see, the OH, F3, is above the ring. It's on the left hand side of the Fisher projection. All the groups on the right are below the ring. And so you can see that OH on two and on four or on the right and so they're below the ring remind yourself that if the ring is pointing down then of course the axial yeah is pointing down and so this OH is pointing down, it's below the ring, so it's alpha, this will be above the ring, yeah? Next door is also below the ring, so this is of course going to be equatorial, 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 yeah? And then next door to it, on the opposite side, that's also equatorial.
simple question like this, for example, we've already made the hemiacetal. Yeah, so here is the anomeric carbon. All we got to do is to realize that these are on the left and so they will be above the ring. So you're looking for two, ox um, two hydroxys next door to each other above the ring. So we have that in this case, we have that in this case, we have that in this case. We do not have that here and we do not have that here. We know also that it's an alpha furanose, and so if it's alpha, then this OH is going to be opposite to that OH. That's CH2OH. So look for the anomeric carbon, anomeric carbon, anomeric carbon anomeric carbon and then look for the OH being opposite to the CH2OH and of course in this case here yeah this is a beta so that's not going to work in all the cases we have what looks like an alpha so we're just left with these two. And actually, we missed out on the fact that this, these guys here are on the same side. So it's definitely not that one. So the answer there is going to be five. Here, we're going to convert the closed ring and convert into an open chain form into the fissure yeah and first of all you gotta realize that okay so we have an alpha and note that everything on top so we're looking at carbon two and carbon carbon two and carbon four carbon one two three four carbon two and carbon four uh, one two three four five carbon two and carbon four has the OH is on the left so carbon two and carbon four well carbon three has the OH on the right of course it's then so this one is out Two and four, three on the right, that one's in. Two, three, four, two, this one is out. Goes two, but no four, right? So we're left with these two. And of course, yeah, we know for a fact that it's a D. And so here we have the D. And so this one's out. Or you could just simply say this one is Dan. Yeah, that one would be. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Reactions. We can look at reactions of the hemiacetal or such hydroxy groups. And of course, reaction of the carbon by carbon. They won't be that difficult, but you got to see that the cyclic form and the acyclic forms are in equilibrium. Even though the cyclic form is more stable, yeah, we can still we still have access to the acyclic form. Yeah, so first of all, realize that yeah, we can easily hydrolyze yeah, um, the hemiacetals and get them back to the straight chain form and vice versa. But not only that, when you do have the hemiacetal, then of course you can combine it with an alcohol 
and of course we've already seen this before where we end up with a planar system here you can see the planar system here so we can attack above or below this carbon yeah and if we attack with a methanol yeah above then of course we're going to end up with a beta system and if we attack below we're going to end up with an alpha system and form our acetyl so it's typical we protonate eliminate water protonate eliminate water to give us our resin stabilized cation which we can attack above or below uh, deprotonate and then we end up with the species why which is an acetyl you can see that our carbon is flanked by two our anomeric carbon is flanked by two alkyl groups uh, two alkoxy groups this is acetyl system is called a glycoside so we're looking at a glycosidic system this being a glycosidic bond we can break this acetyl apart of course by simply hydrolysis to realize our hemiacetals i.e. back to our uh, non-acetyl species our hemiacetal and that of course is simple hydrolysis because then we protonate up eliminate our alcohol in this case and then of course the water can attack above or below and so we end up with our beta or alpha sugars we can also use silver one oxide as a base and alkylate and so now we protect all of the OHs that are present in the sugar these are ethers of course and so they're quite robust unless you treat them with a bit of acid now remind ourselves that we are utilizing yeah we can utilize now the acyclic form and so first we can reduce so in a typical aldol we can reduce with sodium bihydride and now we get an alcohol here and this is yeah we got now two alcohols on the end so here we have sorbitol all yeah we can oxidize so if we oxidize the aldose we end up with aldonic acids if further oxidation yeah now we can oxidize in this case carbon six so we now have a diacid and these are the aldaric acids glycosides are acetals so here for example we got a methyl acetal or we have this disaccharide yeah and you can see the glycosidic species here this is also you know an acetal these are reducing sugars because we can oxidize the aldehyde group or we can oxidize a number of these groups however we cannot oxidize glycosides or we cannot oxidize the sugars when they're in the acetal forms and so these are non-reducing sugars So we can ask a simple question like this and here you can see every single one of these B A and of course D have anomeric carbons which are the C tools but then when you look at C you can see that here is the anomeric carbon you can see it's flanked by two oxygens but of course it is hemiacetal it's a hemiacetal it's an acetal so this is an acetal these are hemiacetals 
sorry about that, so hemicycles. And so this one is non-reducing. We can uh, test for these aldoses or these reducing sugars, and we can use feelings, we can use Benedict's, or tolerance. Tolerance, of course, is a silver mirror test. And all you're doing is you're converting this guy, so this guy is going to be, yeah, your reducing species, and here are the various oxidants, and you get oxidizer to the acid. So I can ask which one gives a positive test for tollens. And of course, tollens reagent, yeah, is a silver mirror test. And again, all of these are hemiacetals. I've got some sort of hemiacetal group. While well, this is an acetal, and so this will not, yeah, give a positive result with tollens. Disaccharides are quite simply two monosaccharides linked together via glycosidic linkage. So usually the four carbon, the OH and the four carbon of the attacking monosaccharide, yeah, reacts with the hemiacetal yeah, OH of the hemiacetal carbon, I should say, we get anomeric carbon and you form the glycosidic ring. So it's usually a 1 4 linkage. That's a glucosidic linkage, I should say. Polysaccharides, of course, huge polymers of the, these monosaccharides. And of course, we have stuff like cellulose given here. You can see the 1 4 linkage, glycosidic linkage. Starch, yeah, consists of two forms amylose and amylopectin. Yeah. And glycogen, of course, which we store, um, is a polymer of glucose and it has alpha glycosidic bonds. What does that mean? It means that the glycosidic bond is opposite to the CH2OH. Here we have beta. You see, cellulose is a beta glycosidic linkage because the glycosidic species is on the same side as the CH2OH. You, see? you can see something like this. Yeah, if you ask anybody, you can see we can do some sort of um, chain expansion. Yeah, so it's a nucleophilic attack there, followed by some sort of some sort of um, some sort of uh, hydrolysis, uh, followed by some reduction. Yeah, so you can see that. Of course, we're gonna get two species here. I think that's the end of the chapter. So we'll see you then.